this is disastrous. That, I mean, we were not prepared for it. It was 2.4 percent even last month, and, uh, and the one would sector have, was at 6.3. Exactly, yeah. and one would have thought that there would be a bit of Diwali stocking that month as well, unless most of the stocking happened in September. But let me read out the other numbers. Electricity is not bad at 13.3. Manufacturing is the culprit, a contraction of 7.6. Mining is up 5.2. Obviously, the base effect is all gone uh, in mining. Then let's look at the other numbers. Basic goods 5.8. Capital goods fall again at 2.3 percent. That's a contraction. Hmm. Intermediate goods contract by 3.1. Intermediate goods were doing fine until recently. Consumer goods contract 18.6 percent. And among that, consumer durables contract by hold your breath. 35 percent. I mean, I don't know how accurate these numbers are, but this is absolutely mind-boggling and uh, nerve-wracking numbers. Not mind-boggling, nerve-wracking numbers. Uh, consumer durables in the previous month had fallen by 11.3. Now falling by 35.2 in what is a Diwali month is perhaps not uh, uh, something we can digest so quickly. Consumer goods as a whole had fallen by 4%. Now they are falling by 18.6% for the month of October. Uh, among other things, uh, capital goods too had fallen last time. No, they had risen by 11.6. But that was always expected to be a lumpy number. Okay, well, uh, Lata, before that, we've got CPI the CPI also, which is coming at 4.38%. So that's pretty much in line with expectations. Our estimates were for 4. 4%, so it's just a tad below that, but the shocking number is the IIP data. Data. Yeah, this is going to be uh, extremely difficult for uh, the Reserve Bank to explain that uh, you know industry is contracting at 4.1%, 4.2%, and actually inflation has come in at uh, 4.38, which is a tad better than what we expected. Uh, uh, we were expecting 4.4. Uh, okay, first thoughts, Rupa. Uh, well, it's really shocking uh, that also uh, shows because it is in line with some of the other leading indicators because we saw exports contracting and it, even automobile sales contracting in the month of October. But still negative 4.2% mm -hmm. is absolutely inconsistent with 6.6% growth in core uh, industrial mm -hmm. production because it also has a weight of 37%. So, uh, you know, I think there is some data issue involved here. Okay, no, there usually are data issues with uh, the IIP, I agree with you. But I think uh, there could be a one-off this time round, Lata, which maybe we should wait by for. But the real contraction is coming in from the manufacturing, which is down 7.6%. I can tell you what are the some of the, you know, that uh, quick estimates, the monthly numbers. Uh, mm. Some of the important items showing high negative growth are, as usual, these silly things. Telephone instruments, mobile phones and accessories down 78%. Gems and jewelry down 49.8%. Heat exchangers down 44% antibiotics, 41% sugar machinery, all these are contraction numbers, 38% lower, wood, wood furniture, 30% lower, ethylene, 29% lower, and tractors, 29% lower are the big culprits, even cigarettes, 22% lower, I can't believe it, there's clearly some computation error if there is a cigarette uh, contracting by 22% year on year, in any case, we have to work with this number, the uh, IIP number yes. is down 4.2%, yeah. few more details about the CPI data, it's the food inflation that which has come in lower, 3.14%, which compares to around 3.29% in the previous month. So that's one more piece of data point uh, with regards to the CPI data. Okay, I, just, I think we've got it all. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, 4.38, and within that, uh, uh, the food inflation is at 3.14. Yeah, now, that compares admirably with uh, the previous month's uh, 5.59. So 3.14 oh, yes. is uh, the food inflation number. Uh, I think uh, it's a fairly grand number number to work with. Uh, month on month, you, if you all can ca calculate quickly, it, uh, uh, Rupa, Saumyo, uh, it has come at 145.5. The index compared to 145.2. So you can uh, uh, calculate the month on month increase. In the previous month, uh, that is uh, October, it was 145. So that's how the index has gone, 145, 145.2 and 145.5. So there's a fairly minor inching up of uh, 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 inflation month on month. The uh, 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 major uh, number really is that cereal production. Uh, I'll just read out the main uh, items. Cereal production is, uh, prices, sorry, not production. Cereal prices uh, are up 5.2%. Pulse is up 7%. The big uh, contributor is milk and milk products, which are up 10%. Uh, 
but uh, countering it is vegetables which have fallen by 10.9 percent fruits have also risen by 13 percent but i think milk has is a weighty item and uh, that is uh, risen by 10 percent however cereals and vegetables have contributed to the general fall in food prices so while the general index rises by 4.38 percent uh, consumer food prices uh, have risen by only 3.14 uh, I could give you all the other numbers if you all want to quickly calculate core. Uh, uh, clothing, bedding and footwear have risen by 6.97%. Fuel and light have risen by just 3.27%. And uh, uh, the food and beverage items have risen by uh, 3.14 items. Of the, the overall food basket. Uh, okay, that's it, Saumyo. Uh, first, your thoughts on IIP? See, I, I think the IIP numbers are shocking, but I have a feeling that October, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, there's a 78% contraction in that uh, communication uh, subsector. And I think October was the month when Nokia had winded, uh, Nokia had actually shut down its operations in India. So that could be an explanation for, that's why it declined by 78, by hoping 78%. And that could be, I believe, one of the possible reasons for this shocking IIP number at 4.2%. Because we are expecting that the IIP number should, in fact, increase this month, but uh, it has moderated, particularly due to this uh, one of phenomenon. And from November, once this impact goes away, then mm -hmm. the November number could actually look much better if we take out this component. So this is as far as the IIP is concerned. But the bad thing about the IIP is that if you look into the April to September mm -hmm. cumulative growth rate, all sectors have expand, had expanded apart from the consumer durables. And if you uh, take this 35% decline, I think consumer sentiments looks to be very weak at uh, currently. Now, regarding the CPI, I think our calculation of court CPI comes around 5.52 percent. See, I can so tell you the miscellaneous. The that I can tell you the miscellaneous number. It is uh, 134.1 compared to 134. Will that help you calculate the uh, court CPI? Yeah, exactly. I think the court CPI is coming to around 5.52 percent, okay. if I am correct. So that means it has moved down from the last month number of 5.8 percent. Yeah. So that's a good uh, thing. And going forward, I, uh, and if I just, uh, since the base effect has been the widely discussed phenomenon, mm -hmm. our estimates suggest just that the around 100 basis points mm -hmm. of this could be explained by the base effect. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the uh, incremental, at the incremental level, the CPI would have been at 5.4% if there was no base effect involved. So base effect has been working in November, but the other thing is that... Without base, how much would it be? The April number... 5.4%. Okay. So okay. it is still at comfortable levels and there it seems that the convert the core CPI and the headline CPI are actually converging because 5.4 and 5.52% are close numbers. But going forward if you look into the CPI trajectory, I think our estimates show that it should it could be actually at on a seasonally adjusted basis it could actually hit below 6% by March 2015. And the other thing is that, but the core CPI should move up a little bit from the next month because the ah, housing okay, Samyo, I'll come to that. undergoes two revisions. Yeah, I'll come to that in a minute. Yeah. Uh, uh, what is your January number looking at the current November number, you, uh, you think, uh, Samyo? I think the January number should look up a little bit. Uh, our current estimates are uh, uh, more than, uh, I think four, uh, it should be a little more than 5%. Okay. As of now, January number. Should be a little more than 5%. And you expect it to be below 6 in March? Yeah, below 6 in March. Okay. Uh, Rupa, similar questions to you. Uh, we have a, a CPI number of 4.38 and uh, um, possibly the core CPI is 5.5. Fuel inflation is unchanged at 3.3, 3.27 last time, 3.3 this time. So not much change. And food inflation is distinctly lower uh, uh, as uh, Ekta just mentioned, uh, sorry, I just forget 3. the number. 3.14. 3.14. Uh, that compares with uh, 5.59 last month. Yeah. Uh, what's your trajectory uh, uh, up until March? 
Uh, well, I expect um, end March inflation to be in the close neighborhood of 6%. I am not uh, so confident that it will necessarily be below 6% mm -hmm. because as RBI has also said in its uh, policy document, lot of transitory factors have contributed to a uh, current easing, especially mm -hmm. uh, seasonal uh, dip in vegetable prices. Okay. We have seen that, you know, vegetable and fruit prices have come down sequentially by 10.9%, which is quite substantial. And they may reverse the track. Also, uh, you know, geopolitical developments we cannot uh, yes. uh, take for granted. And, uh, you know, some of the administered price adjustments have not happened. That's true. And I think... Uh, no, the fuel know, price... Like they have yeah. deregulated... Take your point. Yeah. Fuel price... Uh, so have electricity clear. tariffs also... Uh, electricity tariff rates also may go up because mm. uh, there is a lot of pressure on government that if they have deregulated diesel prices, yes. uh, why not the same adjustments in electric, uh, no, that uh, electricity is, tariff that, that point is taken, but at the moment, uh, the global commodity price is still to our advantage. Yeah. Today, the IEA has lowered the demand for next year by 230,000 barrels per day. So, uh, price is still very much on our side, even if all of it has not been passed on. I would assume international commodity prices will still be uh, ticking lower. But, uh, uh, Manoj, let me come to you. Uh, ultimately, that's where uh, uh, everything will get factored in, in the markets. How will the markets respond to the minus 4.2 IIP and the plus uh, 4.38 CPI number? You know, lest uh, uh, we are made fools of my uh, number, uh, which actually is not that number, so we have to be a bit careful on our comments on a minus 4.2. Mm. But what I want to say is, you yeah, know, the this number is, is not a sign of black a, and white an it is economy in the throes of... Uh, throw <laughs> no, no, I know, I know. I just hope there is no correction around the corner. Okay. But what I want to say is, you know, it's, it's certainly not uh, indicative of an economy in the throes of a recovery. Rather, it's something which has sunk into a recession. So, mm -hmm. I think we have to, I, I'm extremely surprised and quite concerned. As far as uh, the inflation number is concerned, it's close to what market expected. Uh, you would like, you know, I'd also like to point out to you, Lata, you know, just prior to the monetary policy, mm -hmm. I was speaking to you. And the swaps, which is the overnight interest yes. rate swaps, were, were the level which they are today. You know, they're just mm -hmm. about three or four basis points lower. So what does that mean? Mm -hmm. The fact remains that people had front run and mm -hmm. the speculative element which really gets into the OIS mm -hmm. had factored in an interest rate cut. However, mm -hmm. thereafter, after uh, the monetary policy announcement, mm -hmm. you've seen government bonds appreciate 25 basis points. So yields have come down 25 without much happening on OIS. So mm -hmm. effectively, a rate cut expectation has got much more entrenched. Mm -hmm. Whether it will go further than this, you will have more expectation built into pricing mm -hmm. will really be a post January effect in my mind. So, you know, you don't, you're not unlikely to see too much of action in terms of interest rates uh, in the market till January when I think decisively you should see how inflation is uh, going to do and thereafter, of course, uh, what RBI stance could be. That's a very mature uh, way of looking at things, Manoj, but the large part of the market is not looking at it. Every press conference announced by uh, the Reserve Bank, the one yesterday was a fairly innocuous one, which is a regular scheduled press conference after the RBI board meeting in Kolkata, mm -hmm. was seen by the market as a potential platform to announce a rate cut. I mean, why would a governor cut rates on December 10th when he has not cut it on December, December 2nd? 2nd. <laughs> but uh, expectations are running high and rumors are running rife. So uh, the, 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 the expectations are not gone away. But separately, Saumyo does it make the governor's position very difficult. You know, the word that uh, Manoj used, it is worrisome. Uh, at 4.2, this is actually deflationary. Uh, do you think now the pressure to cut will come uh, thick and fast? Yeah, I think the clamor for a rate cut has been there ever since the CPI has been declined on a trajectory, even though we were uh, we had uh, expected that the CPI should touch these levels by November because of whatever statistical reasons. But the point which I'm trying to mention is that now we should watch out for the December and January 2015 numbers. Mm -hmm. And I have a feeling that the numbers should all again surprise us on the downside. Mm -hmm. And if that is which the numbers? case, then the pressure for the CPI numbers mm -hmm. could actually surprise on the downside. Okay. Because the currently what is happening is that the given that there has also been a slightly lowering of the inflationary expectations and 
the demand driven recessions are longer mm. in nature than the demand booms. Mm. So if that is the case, then the numbers of CPI should even surprise on the uh, mm -hmm. downside. Mm -hmm. And in that case, even though admitting that there could be some amount of uh, seasonal, uh, uh, some amount of adjustment on the upside of the CPI from December, January onwards, mm -hmm. but I still think that the pressure on the RBI should actually increase in the coming days in the hope for a rate cut. Mm -hmm. But I have a still feeling that the, the bank could act could in fact look into the fiscal deficit numbers mm. which looks a little bit worry at this point of time. Okay, well it seems as though the macro picture is not turning out to be that great but there's the vegetable dis, uh, in disinflation which has come through also which is 10.9% decline in terms of the vegetable disinflation as opposed to the 1.4% on a month-on-month -month basis. So that's also a huge increase that we've seen in terms of disinflation of vegetable prices on a month-on-month -month basis. But Rupa, I wanted to come to you with regards to the intermediate goods because that too has declined 3.1%. Is it fair to assume that IIP is not going to pick up in the month of November either? Uh, well, actually the leading indicators are uh, projecting a different picture because uh, we have seen a, a significant improvement in PMI uh, manufacturing as well as in uh, passenger car sales, etc. And the trajectory of core industrial production has also firmed up. So I think in all possibility it could be a one-off or some kind of a data error. But uh, we may see some moderate uh, expansion in the month of November, though uh, not any significant expansion. But I think the data for October is definitely due for correction. Okay. okay. Uh, do you think that uh, now the pressure would be there on the governor to uh, hike, uh, to sorry, cut rates, Rupa? Uh, I think uh, uh, budget will be a crucial event uh, for the Reserve Bank of India. And as I told you, they will also wait and watch how the trajectory pans out uh, for non-fuel items. Because, you know, vegetable and fruit prices, this kind of a seasonal dip is quite common. So they will not uh, be much swayed by this mm -hmm. and uh, but yes definitely uh, industrial production front is not looking much encouraging neither the credit demand for banks so I think uh, early uh, you know post February uh, we can expect but not before the budget okay Manoj in your sense how do you think the yields will open up specifically on Monday No, see, as I was mentioning, I don't uh, really think yields are going to react uh, too aggressively because in my, uh, I, I do not really think the timetable for a rate cut is getting substantially advanced. And also the size of the rate cuts are going to substantially mount. In fact, you know, the question whether this puts more pressure on the governor to cut rates, the point is that if actually it's minus 4.2 mm -hmm. and the successive number next month is also going to be equally bad, then no amount of rate cuts are going to help. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really what the government is going to do that can possibly turn this around. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a much bigger question than that if we lend, uh, you know, substantial credence to this number and mm -hmm. any follow-up numbers. But personally, do not expect a substantial impact on the yield uh, in the coming week. Okay, I can just give you the month-on-month -month numbers uh, if it is of any interest. Uh, uh, you know, uh, actually, uh, food prices as an index have not changed at all month-on-month. -month. They remain at 151, October 2014 and November 2014. Fuel and light have gone up a wee bit from 141.1 to 142. So actually, fuel prices have not come down for us at all. Uh, housing has uh, come in at uh, 145.7 compared to 145.1. So there is a marginal, very marginal increase in housing uh, prices uh, month on month. Clothing, bedding and footwear have risen from 155.8 to 156.5 marginally. And again, as I told you, miscellaneous, which includes medical care, education, recreation, transport, what you call, uh, you know, non-food, non-fuel CPI, that has risen from 134 to 134.1. So core inflation practically has not gone anywhere. Month on month, it is important to note that cereal prices have been static. 141.4 has become 141.5. Mm. So no change in cereal prices and vegetable prices have seminal fallen from 190.9 to 188. So actually there has been a month on month uh, uh, fall in uh, cereal prices. Uh, I'll come back to all uh, you economists and bond dealer in a minute. Uh, Sandeep Sabarwal, uh, an expert on the equity markets is joining us on the phone. Sandeep, contraction of 4.2 in October industrial output 
and the November CPI falls uh, uh, to a pace, I mean it is still rising, but rising at a slower pace of 4.38%. Uh, this is the lowest it touches and then after December and January we should start to see the base effect going away. In any case, how do you think uh, the markets will read this? Yeah, hi Lata. I think uh, this uh, entire information and the two sets of uh, data have come in at a time of uh, extreme global market turmoil. So I would, uh, my view is that uh, the industrial production data is very, very nasty. Mm -hmm. And although people might debate about the quality of the data, mm -hmm. but I think only yesterday we saw two durable companies like Havels and TTK Prestige come out and say that the sales growth is not as what they were expecting. And to that extent, uh, the slowdown is a reality. Mm -hmm. Now whether the slowdown is minus two or minus four, we can keep on debating that, mm -hmm. but the reality is that there is no pickup in the economy as of now. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, we have uh, growing global risk. Mm -hmm. So I think the corrective move which has started in the markets should uh, continue mm -hmm. and uh, we should see the markets continue to be weak going forward. All right. Uh, you think the clamor for rate cuts will now increase? Would you uh, advance your rate cut expectations? I don't think so because I think RBI's communication has been very clear mm. and in fact uh, today only I saw a statement by uh, the RBI governor saying mm. that uh, our, uh, we are not supposed to look after the sensex, mm. we are supposed to look after the macro stability of the yeah. economy yeah. and to that extent I think they are very clear on the direction in which they are going mm. and in any case uh, the RBI's projection is a move back to 7% mm. by uh, March but I think that was made at a time when crude was around 85. So we could say that, um, but it should be anywhere between 6 and 7. Mm. And to that extent, between 6 and 7, I don't think RBI is inclined to cut. Mm. So I think uh, it's a 50% chance in my view uh, for a cut in the Feb policy, mm. but a greater probability in the next policy mm -hmm. after that. Fair point. And on Monday, you do expect markets to sink a little more? Monday and for the next few weeks. All right, fair enough. Sandeep Samarwal, thank you very much for joining us. Have a great weekend. Uh, very quickly, what are uh, Rupa and uh, Samyo's expect uh, Rupa Samyo and Manoj's expectations on the rate front? Rupa, uh, I am not really seeing any rate cut in the present uh, current financial year okay. because I, I I honestly feel that that's not going to help uh, you know uh, stimulate the economy mm. because the share of interest expenses in total operating expenses is hardly yeah. six to seven percent. So twenty five bips or fifty bips reduction will not help much. All right. So April is your bet. But they may happen in early. Yes, April. Uh, but depending upon the normalcy of rabi season, okay. as as well as you know continuation of the uh, benign oil price scenario in global markets. Okay, and uh, Samyo, very quickly, we are running out of time. Yes, yeah, I, I also believe that any time after February would be possible for a uh, rate cut scenario mm -hmm. and at this point I am a little, uh, I think this IIP data which has come out this month is more of a supply side issue because if you take out the 80% mm -hmm. contraction, mm -hmm. I think the IIP has actually expanded in the positive territory. So that's the bottom line of this. So you're this taking out which, which one if you take out? Uh, if, if I take out the radio TV uh, communication oh, right, segment, right. Right. Mm. which has declined, I think, by 78%, yes. the IF has actually expanded in the positive set category. Okay. And I can't even believe that telephone instruments can uh, fall by 78%. <laughs> I mean, we're not contracting in mobile telephone or telephone parts by 78%, but these things always come in the IIP data. Uh, Manoj? Great cut. I would think uh, sometime before April, most likely okay. after the yeah, af most likely after the budget announcement. But I do okay. think a 25 basis point cut uh, should happen sometime February. To okay, April. a monosyllabic reply. Ten year on Monday. Ten year on Monday. You know. Uh, unlikely to be substantially lower than 784 but the upside is also very limited so you know 780 to 790 is my range honestly okay, so it could be 785 on monday you think or lower 
If it is, I wouldn't be too surprised, but more likely, I, I think it would be closer to 780 than oh, 785. Right. I, I see liquidity still not an issue, you know, money continues okay. to flow into uh, bonds here. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, Samyo, uh, Manoj and uh, Rupa, thank you very much for joining us. We are uh, uh, ending, uh, winding up the show with uh, some very pessimistic news. Good news on inflation, of course, at uh, 4.38, but uh, a contraction in the industrial output is a rather nasty jar that comes in the data. Thank you very much for watching this special edition CNBC TV 18 continues with the news bulletin.